And, and the other thing, Imam al Ghazali, one of the things I really, I was reading, in fact, just a few days ago in Mizan al Amal, I was on the airplane, and, and I couldn't put that book down. I just got a critical edition in Egypt, so I was reading it. And one of the things that he said, he said, if we look at what all human beings are looking for, they're all looking for happiness. That's it. You know, in, in my country's foundational, well, you also, you're from the States, but in our foundational document, which is the Declaration of Independence, you know, Thomas Jefferson said, uh, all men are born with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and it's interesting because the, that original statement, according to Locke, John Locke, who originally made that statement, said, and the pursuit of property. But Jefferson was a, a metaphysician. He had a, a, a more of a metaphysician's mind than an empiricist. You know, Locke was more in the, the empiricist tradition. Jefferson understood that really that, that is the fundamental human reality is the search for happiness. Now we have different definitions of happiness and Imam al-Ghazali goes through each one of them. Some people define happiness as pleasure but like the Buddhists say the problem with pleasure is that every earthly pleasure is only temporary. Hmm. So when, I, when I'm eating I have the pleasure of food but it, it comes to an end and I can't just keep eating because I get I get full I get and I'll actually get sick if I keep eating the pleasure uh, of sexuality comes to an end and and it's over and then again I can't keep doing it because the body can't take it it's as simple as that and the pleasure of sleep somebody said you know, what is the pleasure of sleep? Is it when you're sleeping? Well, it can't be because you're asleep. So is it before sleep? And then it's not really the pleasure of sleep. Is it after sleep? Then it's not really the pleasure of sleep. So what is it? But we all recognize sleep as a pleasurable thing, the gentle tyrant. So he looks at all these things and then he quotes Imam Ali and he said, what, you know, what a wondrous thing the world is. The, the greatest, there's only five things that everybody really takes derives pleasure in uh, drink food scent cloth and uh, and and sexuality and he said um, in the sensory thing I mean there's companionship and things like that Th those are different but he's talking about senses and so he says the highest drink is water and he said it's al ashya it's the least of things in the world he said the highest food is the vomit of bees, honey. He said the, the highest cloth is the excrement of worms, which is silk. And then he said the, 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 the highest um, smell is the mucus of a gazelle, the musk odor. And then he said, and, and the greatest pleasure in the world is the meeting of the two urinary tracts. So, <laughs> there's the world. Mm -hmm. that, so he said that can't be what happiness well, is. It can't, it can't, that can't be the ultimate. If it is, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it's a real trick's being played on us. And, and, then, and then he looks at, at um, a position and wealth and power and all these other things that people pursue. And again, he says the problem with them is, is that beauty is, is an intangible. It's in the eye of the beholder. It's something that we can lose at any moment. Uh, it's something that the more you examine it, the, the, the more elusive it is. You know, if, if you see a beautiful woman, like Dr. Niqib al Atas said, if you see a beautiful woman, and, and you, you take a magnifying glass to try to get a closer look and suddenly you're at the level of pores. She's, she's no longer beautiful. She's porous. So all of those aspects that people consider happiness. So he says, in the end, what is happiness? Happiness is virtue. Happiness is, is living a virtuous life. And he says, and, and virtue is predicated on knowledge and action, right knowledge and right action. And that's where Imam al-Ghazali is also very extraordinary. Is he, one of the things that he hated, Imam al-Ghazali hated the sectarian mind. 
And the reason he hated the sectarian mind is because he felt this, the sectarian mind's sickness was it, it was provincial. Uh, the sectarian mind always focuses on one area or aspect and grabs on to that and won't let go. Uh, Churchill described the fanatic as somebody who wouldn't change his mind and wouldn't change the subject. And, that, and that's, that's, the, that's the mind that Ghazali hated. And another aspect, because he was a philosopher, in the real true sense of the word, you know, philosophia, the lover of wisdom, he was somebody that was willing to examine a question to its utmost. He wanted to take it as far as you could take it. And because he was willing to do that, if you wanted to talk to him about it, you better have done the same thing. Because if you hadn't, he wasn't going to waste his time. He didn't suffer fools gladly. He, he did not suffer fools gladly because he had done the work. And he expected his interlocutor to, to have done the work as well. And if you weren't willing to do the work, he, he just he wasn't going to waste his time. He had other things to do. 